Okay, this is just going to be a short tutorial that covers some of the um, next steps, next elements for Project M2A3, the Healing Garden model. Uh, I, sorry, but I just didn't have time to go through the whole sequence. Uh, and I'm not going to go back through and remind you about how to export from AutoCAD using a double w block command. Just to let you know some of the other things you might want to send out in pieces. Uh, the plants, since these are uh, all blocks in AutoCAD, you don't have to worry about them touching or interconnecting with each other. So you can just isolate, layer isolate the plants, send them all out at one time. <clears throat> the other thing I would kind of group out together are the steps and the walls. And I'll show you how to kind of pull these apart a bit because we really want the steps and the walls separate. And we'll build them into 3D forms and drop them down onto the site. And then uh, one of the design elements in the Healing Garden are a whole series of natural boulders that are chipped and shaped uh, for different uses. This area here is the water feature. Some of these are seats. This is a little seating circle that happens. So I'm not going to do all these in this tutorial. I'll just get a couple of them. They're really pretty straightforward. And introduce you to the Drop GC um, plug-in, which allows you to drop these things right down to the plan where they belong. Doesn't mean you won't maybe have to adjust them a bit, but it does most of the work for you. So let's start with the, the uh, boulders since they're kind of the simplest. And actually, one of the things I would do with this is ones that are out here, and this is a group, I think, so get inside the group, actually. I'm going to explode that because that'll just make it easier. So for starters, the circle, select them, make it a group. <clears throat> Maybe we get the central fountain area, make that a group. These are boulders that are at the top of the stairway where that wall is. I'll make those a group. So, uh, you know, maybe these three stones are a group. <clears throat> you don't want to group them all together because when you drop them, they're not, it's going to take kind of the one that hits the landform at the highest point, and then the other ones may be floating. And you might even want to explode these once they're created, but we can drop them down and then move them individually. So the nice thing about these are, and maybe I'll focus on this area here is, uh, and I'm going to provide some photos, uh, which I haven't had a chance to do yet, uh, of this area so you can look at them. But basically, once I get inside this group, I'm just going to do a select all, right click, and generate faces. You should remember that command. And you know, some of them come in one color or another color. What I'm going to do is take these and just reverse faces, reverse faces. Since the, the blue sides are the fewest, I don't really care which is which. I'm just going to... <clears throat> make sure all the same and that way then I'm just going to use the push pull tool <coughs> and I happen to know that these in the center are for that fountain so they might be I don't know six foot six I can double click on this this is kind of leading up to it and basically I can snap over to here uh, and you're going to use the photographs to make this happen I know these are just slightly different sizes and I'm just eyeballing it. So it really actually works pretty quickly just to go through here and pull these up. And if you want this one to match that one, this one to match, oh, let's put that over there. Some of these might be seats. They would be kind of one foot six inches and I can double click. Some of these are taller. I don't really remember from the photographs, but again, I'm just getting them up into 3D. <clears throat> so that I can start seeing, I'll snap that one to that one, that one to that one, that in here. And then one of these is, that's kind of connected in. <clears throat> Maybe this one, yeah, that's kind of connected into. <clears throat> well, later on, the, the water feature has this is pretty much all you have to do to create the water feature. And you can go in and smooth these, or if we want them to tilt a little bit, I could double click on this, get this, go in the center point, hit the control key, skew it in a little bit. So it's got a little bevel on the sides. It's not perfectly vertical. So we can go in and start manipulating those just by scaling. We can go in here with the eraser tool can smooth all these off. You know, start creating edges if you want. The rocks actually have some facets on them, so 
it's possible you might not really want to do the top edges. Maybe we just get the bottom edges. And there's actually a plug-in <coughs> that uh, I can try here, see how it works. These three up here, these are round corner, round corner, sharp corners in 3D. And I basically come in and select a series of lines. And up here, it's got an offset. I want that to be three inches, not three foot three inches. Actually, maybe even two inches would be better. <clears throat> Move outside, and it kind of bevels that off there. You can see how it rounds it off. Uh, if you don't want to use that one, you can use this. Check that, and it kind of creates a little bit more of a, a bevel on there. Now, if it starts creating artifacts like that, I'm sorry for the screen here. It's uh, cutting things off inside the group, the view. But again, you can do that manually. I can uh, talk about that in class a little bit. Sometimes it works really great. Sometimes it starts doing other things, and it might be because I have that. Let's just try it without those edges smooth. I think that's what's causing the problem because it doesn't know really what to do with that. To tell you the truth, you can just click on the top surface, click out here, and you can see how it bevels that off a little bit on the edge. That might just be all we need to do. Apply, oops, not that one. Uh, maybe pick this one. I'll come up with some other textures for you, but then it starts looking a little bit more like uh, papers. So anyway, then you can take a shape like this or another one that's out here, copy it, and we'll put it across as a lintel. It kind of stretches across the side here. So again, select all, generate faces. Push pull, uh, maybe one foot six for that one. And then I'm going to just take this one, copy it, get out of the group, paste, and then just use my scale tool, stretch that out a bit, stretch down over here. And voila, we've got a sculptural fountain. Anyway, uh, I'll have the photos for you so you can look at that. But that's kind of the idea with all these. And then to take this down, I've got to move it down a bit because I have so many layers in the way. But if I spin this around this way, I'm just going to use the move to get it down below the plants. So, okay. Assuming you don't have layers in front of it, once it's a group, you can right click on it, say drop GC, and that will drop it right down until it hits the paving. Now, in this case, there is a little slope on that. So like I said, you still may need to adjust it. Maybe I need to adjust it something like that. And uh, so you can start seeing how that's going to work in there. So those, although that's kind of a complicated sculptural feature, because the boulder footprints are there, you just need to make 3D shapes and drop them down. And they just using generate faces is pretty good. That's pretty straightforward. So the walls and steps, uh, those are ones that we're going to have to separate out. So again, this is a group, so I'm going to explode that. And then the wall, these other lines right here are the handrails. So we don't, I don't really want this overlapping with my wall in terms of the footprint. So what I want to do is I'm going to move this around, drag across, select everything, zoom in, select these other pieces, these other bits. Okay, and then I'm just going to right click and make that a group. <coughs> and uh, I think the rest of this wall I can triple click on. It's not actually connected to the other railing, so I'm going to triple click on that, make that a group. 
And this wall, I, we're going to build that out of uh, individual stones. So if you wanted to take this and just maybe close it in, so it's a surface, we can drape that down onto the surface so we know where that wall goes. So I could do that again by triple clicking on that one, come down here, and you can see this is basically what we're going to do. This is a kind of, it's a loose laid stone retaining wall made from boulder components that we can we can create and it just slopes down kind of along with the ground. So I could drape that, I'm not going to because actually there's nothing under here for it to drape on because I cut I cut the space in there so those would go underneath. But you get the idea. Before you do that, you could put that on as a footprint, then you know exactly where to arrange the wall on the site plan, but you're not going to extrude it into a form. This one on the other hand is a brick vertical brick retaining wall. You can see the footprint here. So I'm going to go back to that one and say, okay, let's get this group, open it up, select all, generate faces, push pull. I don't know how quite a high it is. Now there are a couple other lines here because I'm actually going to break this. Uh, in fact, I'm going to come out, I think, to here and here, and maybe from here to here. We can always pull it over and just take that section out of there because there are some boulders. There are some boulders that get placed in here, in between here around the top of the step. And so these walls don't actually go all the way over, but because they're planar, we can always adjust them over if we need to. Okay, but I'm going to leave that right where it is for now. So, and the height of this, I don't really care. I'm going to set it based on the topo, and if it sticks down through the bottom, that's okay. So the same thing, I can take this, and again, in order to get it down below, the last object, I'm going to do that, right click on it, choose drop GC. And, you know, it just hits the surface, then I can take my move tool, get the blue, hold the shift key down, and just slide it down into place. And again, I'll give you an approximation of the height. I think that's probably on the inside, it's probably one foot six feet tall at the stair, or even a little less than that. It's not a very tall wall but you can see it fits in along the sidewalk pretty nice and everything matches pretty well. So that's how we're going to handle the structural elements like walls and steps. And the same is true of this. Basically, I did the same thing for the other one. I went up there and I selected those lines. In this case, I created vertical lines and just used the follow me tool to create a tubular railing along the step. I think there's actually a curve in here, but for this exercise assignment, I don't care if you do that. And I had to adjust the landform a bit to make this work. But basically, you create this as a group up above, you pull it up into 3D, and then drop it down. And I, what I did was I snapped it at the top here, and these stairs are just six inches. That's why I use six inch risers, and the tread width is based on the lines that are imported from AutoCAD. So if you use six inches, it should work pretty well. So that's like this one here. You can see there are no lines connecting the edges, so I'm going to add that and add that, and now I've got my steps, so I can just simply use a push-pull. Again, six, enter, snap to here, six, enter, pull this one to here, pull it up again, six, enter, and this is the easiest way just to pull them up instead of trying to keep double clicking all the way up. Snap to the top, pull it up, six, enter. That's six inches. Okay, and then, you know, to clean it up, there's no point in leaving these extra lines in there. I don't need them, so. Just go in there when you're done and take them out of there so it's nice and clean. And then before deleting these lines, which I don't really need, I use those to, you know, create a, a vertical line, uh, maybe 30 inches tall that represents the, the railing there. <clears throat> so 
two foot six. You know, you can do the same thing here. Six. And then you can create a circle down here. This is when I might come in and actually erase these things to get them out of the way. Draw a circle. And then select the path. And then the follow me tool and click on your circle and it'll just pull that up around there. Okay, so now I could have done a better job of that. This probably should go straight and then down so it goes past the stairway, but and that's a little thick for a railing witness uh, thickness, but I wanted you to be able to see it. So anyway, that should be made all as then I can take all this, make it a group. And then I drop that group down, line the top stair up with the terrain there, and go from there. Okay, so that's kind of how you do the those structural elements. We don't really need to drape those on the ground plane, but we do need to uh, create the 3D form. And this railing, you can delete these things. You don't really need to have those. We don't we don't need those as part of our our part of our model. It's more detail than we really need. But we'll do the same thing. Connect this up. Extend these things. You know, you might be able to do this by just selecting it all. Just select all. Oops. Select all. Extend close. Select all. Generate faces. Boom. So again, you can reverse these four faces if you want, just so they're consistent. But uh, the only reason you really need to do is it helps with materials uh, application, and it also means that if you want to double click, it'll go the same direction. Otherwise, if one's blue, it'll go up, and the one's white, it'll go down, even because it's looking at opposite sides of the face. <clears throat> okay, so that's how you put those structures together. And then the last thing I'll end up on quickly here is just the, uh, I'll explode these, is just the plants. And basically, we're going to substitute these blocks by click, clicking on them, right, selecting them, right-clicking, and choose Reload. And let's see, somewhere. I have some plants. Um, let's Oh, there we go. Sorry. So these are big trees. <clears throat> Those are little ones. Oh, well, this I'm not going to take the time to figure out. Again, you can use 2D trees for this. These are just some that I have in here. I'm going to pick. <clears throat> Just, I'm not going to worry about it. <clears throat> That's not the right tree, but I don't have very good selection in here. I thought I did, but I don't. Um, let's take that one. So you need to organize your components, which clearly I haven't done very well. So you have a set of trees, large, medium, small, and some shrubs. And then when you do that, it will automatically substitute those. Now what I can do is I can also once it's placed, if I really think that should be bigger, I can select that, use a scale. And the way I do this is I scale them up the way I want, then hold the control key and scale them out. That way they stay in exactly the same position. You don't want them to move around. If you do the proportional scale, they'll move around. So that's really all there is to it. These are a bunch of medium trees. Select it, right click, reload. Uh, let's choose that one, we'll click OK. And so it just swaps all those 2D block symbols out for trees. And then of course I can select all those, right click and choose drop GC. And it just drops them right down onto my terrain model. Uh, and that 
looks pretty good. So once you get there, now it's starting to look like the actual design. You see the grove of trees planted in there. They're all touching the landform right where they're supposed to. Uh, and actually these trees fit pretty well in there. And it starts giving you a whole different character for the design. So that's just a short tutorial to help you uh, take a few more steps if you're ready to do so. I'll cover this in class tomorrow as well. Uh, and uh, um, maybe a couple other things that we're going to deal with in terms of one of the things I want to show you how to do is how to map um, a photograph on a facade of a building like this so you don't have to model all the pieces to it you just map the picture on it and then it becomes a really nice background uh, so let me back out of here and get rid of a couple of these trees let's just undo that for a second there we go so you can see that uh, I've just taken a photograph and put it on there it's a quick and easy way to do that so we'll cover that tomorrow in class hopefully this will help you get going a little farther if you're ready to do that